Hey everybody, back on the CB500X. I just got done on the uh, 300 Rally. I like to ride them so that I don't have to keep them on a battery tender. <laughs> so, just gonna go out and put a half, uh, you know, half hour on this one or so. And uh, hopefully the fuel light doesn't start blinking at me by that time. And I'll get gas in it next time. But uh, we're down to one bar. 190 miles on the tank. I guess uh, the first thing I noticed on this bike when I got on it today was the clutch. <laughs> the first time I pulled it in, I tried to use two fingers and I was like, oh wow, that's a little harder. Which is just a reminder how good the clutch is on that uh, Rally and the 300L, I'm sure. Um, it's brilliant. It's nice to have a good clutch feel. And uh, especially for off-road riding, it's nice to be able to hold the handlebars with at least a couple fingers uh, while you're clutching, because you end up clutching a whole lot more. So, the other thing I notice on this one is that the uh, shift lever is too short, I think. It's a lot harder to get my boot under there to upshift. Kind of end up using the edge of it instead of the uh, top of my foot. So there's that. My mirror was out of adjustment. And uh, I guess when you have several different bikes you ride, and, and I've noticed this on my, my, on my bicycles as well, that having the uh, controls all as close to this position that you like them as possible makes a huge difference. I've really noticed, uh, you know, I get on a different bicycle and I go, oh, this brake lever is too low or too high, usually too high. And uh, I just adjust them and adjust them and adjust them until, like, I get on it and it's just, like, put my fingers out in the right where they should be. Um, and I've, I guess I've just become hypersensitive to that um, with, uh, with off-roading especially because, you know, when you need the brakes, you need to know exactly where they're going to be. And when you're riding all these different vehicles, um, you know, it's good to have them as close to the same as you can. And, you know, and little differences like not being able to shift when you need to uh, can make the difference uh, between, uh, uh, you know, success and failure, I guess I'll put it, but, uh, or enjoying the ride. So, yeah, this, uh, you know, it's a great bike, too. Uh, it's got, uh, I don't know, 13,000 miles or something. And uh, I bought a new 2014. It was It's a 2013 model, but they were white, and I wanted a black one. So I got a 2013, and uh, there weren't any left with ABS. So I got one without ABS. And it's fine. I would have preferred ABS, I think. Um, you know, I've only locked up the front a few times on this, but it's got pretty good brakes, and uh, it's just an added safety thing, especially if you're going to be running knobby tires or riding all year long in the wet and stuff. It's good to not lock up your front tire ever. You know, there's not really a situation where you want it locked. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's a pretty good bike. Pretty good bike. I got this uh, tank bag on it. It's pretty nice. Big tank bag. I don't feel it at all, which is a plus for me because I don't like being feeling like things are touching me. I went uh, when I did the Washington BDR on uh, on this bike. I had a hydration backpack on, and uh, and I had a big duffel bag strapped to the back seat, and within like. 50 miles or something I was going crazy and I had to stop and like strap the hydration pack down to the top of the duffel bag and get it off of me because they kept touching you know and I was just like nah it's not gonna work especially off-road you know on the on the road I was riding all the way across the state 70 miles an hour so I was tucked over a little bit and uh, so I could you know kind of change my body position to make it not touch but you know every time I stood up or sat upright or you know whatever I could feel it back there nope can't handle that so I know that now and uh, I try to avoid having things touch me when I'm when I'm packing you know I still do like to have a hydration pack though just it saves you from having to 
stop and reach around for a water bottle or whatever. Um, but yeah, this bike's also real easy to ride. The clutch isn't too hard. It's just a lot harder than the other one. Um, and I have a hydraulic clutch on the uh, KLX 300, which, uh, you know, has made a world of difference. I mean, it probably could have been lighter with uh, just changing the cable or whatever, but doing some maintenance, but yeah, a hydraulic clutch was available, so whatever, you know. I was making the top, you know, machinist wage at the paper mill, so I could afford to, uh, to pay for a clutch once and be happy forever. So, yeah, we're going to go take the curvy road here across the lake. Maybe we'll see some Christmas lights. I don't know. Happy holidays, by the way. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving and hope you're going to find everything you're looking for for Christmas for everybody and uh, get what you want. I don't know what I want. I mean, I, got, I don't know. I really need much, but, you know new frying pans i'm all about the uh, cast iron collection you know and barbecuing so cast iron works in the house and it works on the barbecue and it works on the campfire and the camp stove so you know it's nice to nice to have a big collection of that stuff this is easy to change directions on like the other honda i mean I, when i rode that africa twin it was like I don't know if, if like something was wrong with it or something was wrong with me, but it like took an incredible amount of steering effort to get that thing to lean over. And it wasn't like the handlebars were real heavy or, you know, it just must have just been the weight on the front wheel or something. I don't know. Or it was flexy in the front end. I, I don't know what it was, but it seemed really hard to go through the twisties on, do slow speed maneuvering. So... I don't know. I, I thought about an Africa Twin, and then I rode one, and I was like, eh, I like the power. <laughs> but uh, maybe when in the sport touring package that they came out with, maybe if it looked like a BMW and had a Honda engine, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. I don't, you know, I still think about a sport touring bike. I had one in the past, and, you know, they're a lot of fun, but I'll probably end up in trouble. And, you know, most of my riding's like this, and, you know, you got a bike that'll go... 85 or 90 easily in third gear it's uh it, the temptation's always there and it's uh hard for me to control that temptation like when i drive my wife's gti it's always uh it's always uh, uh, like a lesson in uh temptation control because that thing's a lot more fun and i can mash through corners like no other vehicle i've driven recently so uh it's got scary traction, really. It's uh, it's a great vehicle. Well, this one gets maybe 10 miles per gallon less mileage. It's a little heavier to pick up. Oh, it's a lot heavier to pick up. I ran it over the truck scale at work one time, and it was like... 470 I think because it was about 200 pounds heavier than the KLX and that's just 200 pounds that makes it less likely for me to want to take it off-road I think 